Working on a still life in oil on uh, Cam's panel, and I'm using Windsor New Paints today, and uh, something that I started a little bit ago, and we're going to try and wrap it up today. So, yeah. My name is Kathy Bugaiski, and uh, I work here at the Anton Art Center, and uh, I work mostly in oil. I do acrylic classes, um, do a little bit of watercolor. I do it all. And um, I'm also a sculptor, so um, those are my loves, oil paint and sculpture. How long have you been painting? <laughs> um, well, seriously, probably about 12 years now. Yeah, so started back uh, going to Macomb College and uh, finished out at uh, Wayne State University with a BFA. And um, here we are, trying to do it. <laughs> nice. Love teaching the classes here at McCall, at uh, excuse me at Anton Art Center, and uh, the kids are great, and the adults are even more fun. They're little kids and big bodies, and they just have fun, so it's great. So this is an oil painting. Today? This is an oil painting today, right? Mm -hmm. Which allows you to um, mix a whole lot longer, and you get those lush colors and mixtures, or you can. Plop it on too, just like you would acrylic, and uh, get some impasto, meaning heavy paint. Um, so it's it's uh, has a lot of um, variety, variety that you can go with. So, yep. All right, let's get back on it. Thank you. Try and catch some of the shadows here and the highlights. It's a process of building and going back and forth constantly. And this little painting is something that I um, normally don't do. I normally take months to do a painting. So this is really a quick sketch type. Painting. I'm one of those crazy people that gets into all the nuances and details and spends hours and days in one little section. So, Kathy, what's the biggest challenge in working with the oil paints? Oh, man. Um, probably everyone says the drying time, but even that in itself, it depends on the color uh, and how long it takes to, to dry. Well, it doesn't dry, it oxidizes, technical term. Um, so it's not like acrylic in that way where it evaporates, the water evaporates. It's an oxidation process, a chemical that's as far as I go with it. <laughs> but um, so that would probably be the biggest challenge of oils. Um, other than that, there really aren't, to me, um, any challenges other than your color mixing and that's just playing with it and getting to know, you know, the color systems and just doing. The so more if, you do, the... If I was a novice, which I would be, and I wanted to learn to paint, which medium would be easiest for me to learn? Wow. I'm partial. I, I still go with oil because it, it just has such a wide window of possibilities. Um, maybe the drawback in oil would be working um, with you know the uh, chemicals, um, but now they have an odorless uh, turpentine, if you will. That was the big fear many years ago. Now they have products like Gamsol, 
and a uh, beautiful product called um, Lavender Oil by um, Chelsea. And they're just marvelous. And you don't have to, they're very safe in studio. So, yeah. so that would be my choice. Because you can always go into um, you can always go into acrylic and, and watercolor. Watercolor is a little bit harder for some people because um, you're working backwards. You're you're having to save your highlights and think ahead much um, much more. So that becomes a challenge to some people thinking like that. Um, but. That's another fun, I mean, they all have their, you know, their beauties. They really do. Um, watercolor is, is fun, it's whimsical, it can be whimsical. I remember the first time I saw a watercolor painting um, and it looked like an oil because it was lines and, you know, it were just precise and the color was so rich and vibrant. I was like, that's not a water, yes, it's a watercolor. So I was really, really taken by surprise. I didn't know you could do that with watercolor way back when. So that was, that was fun to find that out. And then learning to see and really, really look um, at what you're painting and drawing, in our case today, painting. Um, because we have a tendency to look at the whole, and if you really, really study and look at what you're trying to capture, um, you're going to see all kinds of colors in here. Like in in this little setup, yes, there's there's that beautiful purple, but there's also you know some red, some crimson, and white, and even blue. And I, so I'm mixing those when I, um, you know, I've got here, I have Prussian blue and uh, crimson, alizarin crimson with, you know, some white, of course, to get your, your tints in there. And this will look real broken, but then you'll go in and, you know, possibly do another layer and break that back down and bring in some of those areas of light and dark. And that's really what it's about, is seeing the lights and the darks. So this might look a little funky at first, but then as you keep going, it kind of evolves. Also, in oil painting, it's, it's um, the building up of layers, too, that just really, really can make things pop and look so beautiful and lush. And you, and you can do that in the other mediums also. It's, it's not exclusive to oil. But there's just something about that oil being in the, in the mix that really really does wonders, I think. I'm just a little partial, maybe. So in, in my setup, um, here's something, too, to kind of note as you're, you know, beginning to, to work and think about setting things up for yourself. Um, all of these pieces I made except the, the background material. Um, they're all ceramic pieces that I made, and now if I was to photograph it, then you know that would be mine also. So you want to keep keep things um, within yourself that you have you know kind of 
made and bring about your voice and and how you see things. Um, these are some of my favorite things. Um, are the ceramics and organic feel. So, kind of putting it out there a little bit. Good thing to step back and kind of view what you're trying to do. It gives you another perspective on things. Where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, for the still life? Or in, in general? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your heart. <laughs> um, things that I love, things that really excite me. I can't explain that. It's just, you know, something in your heart, in your mind that you want to convey. At least that's where I come from. Um, thus, you know, the organicness of clay and um, just those, well, the blue isn't too earthy other than if you want to refer to the sky, but the greens and the blues and um, all those tones just kind of speak earth to me. So, I guess if you want to get real theoretical, then you have a purple background that either color-wise it kind of makes things pop, but you have you know that royal feel and and uh, voice. So you think a lot about the earth and and uh, creation and all the organicness of it. And so I'm kind of giving it an elevated. Place. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <laughs> so things kind of come and go. You know, my edges will change um, as you as you come and make something else. Talk a little bit, and then. You'll bring that back when you go back into it. And the beauty of painting is there always is oopses. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You just wipe it off or go back and paint on top. And if it's watercolor you might have a little problem but you can always start over Something you want to think about too is angles and, and how you want to place things in your work to kind of make motion and keep the viewer's eye moving constantly in your piece. Um, so I'm just kind of, those angles may not exactly be there, but that's where my license as an artist comes in. I can make it say and do what I want it to. And so when you're painting and drawing and whatever you're, you're uh, working in, think about those things. What do you want your viewer to see most of all? And how are you going to get them to see that and stay, you know, stay there? So 
all things to think about. Even if you're just making pretty art, you know, something you want to make for your living room or where you're not going to change the world with this painting, but um, you still want people to kind of stay and look at it a little bit. So maybe some of you want to kind of think about getting started. Um, I'm going to show you a little look at my palette here. Um, this is what we call a color string here. And I have the pure color at top and um, obviously our titanium white at the base. And I take a little, like half and half, of each and start in the middle where I can get a mid mid tone and then I take my palette knife and just kind of scooch them either way after I get the mid tone I take some and go this way and then work back into the white and this gives you a, a pretty good range of um, colors so that you don't have to think so much about mixing and you can just kind of dip into it um, always remember that when you do change a drastic color, you want to you know, pull the color out of your, your brush and um, change into a clean brush so you would come into your um, Gamsol here is what I'm using today as a brush cleaner, so, which would be the old turpentine. So I'm cleaning my brush really well because I'm going to come in here and keep this a little light and I have some really heavy Prussian blue and alizarin crimson so I need to clean that out a little bit. Just going to clean. And with the oils um, and, and the solvents, it's really good to use a good, um, I'm using cloth right now because I like it the best, and I can. Um, but if you use, um, oh, what are some of those good towels? Um, Bounty is a good one. It's real absorbent. OK, so my brush doesn't have to be completely clean, because I'm still keeping within this palette. But I just want to get a little lighter, so I'm going to mix that in here. You always have space to kind of bring those not rogue colors, but colors that you're mixing that aren't pure off to the side. So here I'm on a little more red, so I already have somewhat of a mixture. I didn't think about it so much. Mm -hmm. 